Hi, welcome back to Every Man of Warrior training videos. My name is Matt. I'm John Degner. Hey guys. Last time we talked about the topic of what's next. And John and I just kind of want to talk about that topic. But it's hard. It, it's, it is a hard question to, to answer. Mm. And what we really want guys to remember is the importance of having a daily quiet time, right? That's right. And digging into God's Word right. the way that every man a warrior has taught us topically through these important issues that we learn from every man a warrior. But when we're done with Emaw, I know I, I struggle with continuing it to have those deep quiet times, right? Yes, that's right. I think it's natural for all of us to want to go into something new, uh, yeah. to perk our interests and to stay fresh, if you want to call it that. Right. But, uh, I know that right now, after going through Every Man a Warrior, the many times as I've done it, uh, that when I don't do it, my quiet time suffered drastically. Yeah. Uh, I found that there's an answer to every issue of life on every decision I make, every goal that I set, mm -hmm. every problem that I try to overcome right. is found in God's Word. And even after 30-some years of studying God's Word, I still haven't grasped the truths that are in there right. when I need them, when I need to apply them to life. And most studies, like I lead a Bible study every Friday. We've been meeting for 12 years. And most of the studies that we've gone through don't challenge us or reinforce the skill of having the quiet time. So we kind of study a topic, gloss over it, and then move on to the next topic, right? Right. And, and there's nothing wrong with that necessarily. No, but I'm I, not challenged to continue to have a quiet correct, time necessarily. Right. Yeah, I, I like all the materials that are out there, and I want them to remain because I've learned something yeah. from everything I've gone through. Uh, but I noticed in reviewing the uh, people that are purchasing Every Man a Warrior that uh, there are a lot more book ones going on than the book two and book three. As a matter of fact, right now it's about for every 100 book ones, there's only 60 book twos and 40 book threes. Uh, and that does show me that guys are mainly interested in learning the skills about how to get into the Word yeah. and spending time with God, but they're not learning how to apply it to their lives. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not taking the time to actually take the things that they're getting from God's Word and and being held accountable to actually applying them to life. Um, and when I don't have Emmerman of Warrior to do that and I'm going through another resource, I might feel good about the fact that I'm going through it, but I don't walk away with anything that I actually have applied to my life. So could we say maybe a, a good what's next is if you haven't studied through book two and three, maybe challenge yourself to study through book two I, using the skills that we learned right. from book one. Yeah, as I, I told Matt earlier on that, uh, that there's two reasons for why book two and book three were written. Uh, number one is that men want to have skills to fight the things in life that they're struggling with. Yeah. They want to know how to become a better husband, a better father, overcome moral lust, uh, understand money and things like that. Uh, so you need to have something that they take the skills from book number one and they start uh, studying them into the life's uh, problems that they're having. Right. Uh, and the second real uh, obvious reason for book two and book three is that if a person doesn't take the skills that they learned in book number one, and apply it to 20 or 30 weeks of doing it time and time mm -hmm. and time again, that it doesn't become a habit. Yeah. But I want to add one thing to that, and that is if I don't go through Every Man a Warrior with someone else, even after I've gone through it six times, my quiet times are not deep. Yeah, and me too. I've been so. through book one at least 10 times. And if um, I just took my son through, book one. Oh, tell me about and that. And there'd been a, there was about a month gap between book one. We skipped book two because he's young, and we started book three, and I asked, I asked my son, uh, how are your quiet times going? And he goes, they kind of fell off. I'm like, and so we talked about it. And it was, it was great for this video, but so we talked about it. And it's because we weren't sitting down and challenging each other and holding each other accountable. And the material, there wasn't material that was leading him to have a quiet time and to dig into God's word. John, the other thing is we only remember five percent of what we study right and that i believe a hundred percent right and, and it, w w yeah and it's yeah. true and so if we just go through book one and shelf it and forget about it we're probably going to forget what we learned there yeah. and then if we don't go through book two and three it's the same same issue the general there. habit that i've seen from different men that i've worked with over the last 
30, 35 years, is that they have an agenda all set up of things that we're going to go through. Yeah. Uh, books of the Bible or chapters of the Bible or different book studies and book reviews, and they have them all listed in topics. And then they say, okay, we're going to go through all these topics and we're going to talk about them, and at the end we'll, we'll all be right. Uh, corrected, right? Yeah. Uh, every time. Even seminars that I've gone to where before I've really enjoyed the seminar presentations, but I don't take away anything. Yeah. Two weeks later, there isn't anything that I well, remember. Well, there might be something to take away, Two. but right. we forget about it. Right, right. Which is not, I mean, I guess that's okay, but uh, yeah. there are skills that we want guys to learn. Yes. And to right. reinforce over and over so that they be, do become a habit, right? Yeah. You know, and it, and another thing, John, God speaks to us in our in our quiet times, you know? Right. Um, when I finally realized that uh, I'd been hearing all my life that people hear from God, um, and of course when you haven't personally heard from God, uh, you have to make a decision. Either they're lying and they're trying to put one over on you, yeah. or maybe you've not experienced something you should have experienced. Um, and it wasn't until the study of Every Man a Warrior uh, when I was forced to do it right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to fight to do this. This yeah. is work. It is. Uh, that I finally began to get direction from my Creator while I was studying His Word. Right. And He started to speak to me uh, with, with direct um, instructions yeah. in the areas of life that I needed Him the most. Right. Um, and at that time, I'd been through probably the top 22 to 23 top-line men's ministry resources. And I think that if I would have had the benefit of learning the skills of having a quiet time, that I probably would have experienced all of those resources a lot more deeply as well. Yeah, so, yeah, because you could apply the skill of having a right. quiet time in resources that don't lead you to do that. And I think that's an important thing in what's next, too. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a constant desire to experience new resources, new books that are written. Um, and I think that that is fantastic. But why not take the skills that you learned in the EMA process of how to, to take a true story and to have questions that help you understand it and then take God's scripture and talk about that as well and then go into skill development of what am I going to do with this new in right. information and then the accountability of, of doing it in your life and being forced to show right. that, you're, that you're taking more quiet times and you're understanding more of God's word on that topic. Yeah. And you can do that in... I don't want to use names of, of, of material, but you can yeah. do that in just about any key men's ministry yeah. resource. So. I think the bottom line we were talking about is we have to fight for this. Yes. We really do. Spiritually, yeah. uh, time management-wise, we really have to fight for this. And if we haven't talked about this before to the guys, uh, there isn't one of you that isn't involved in a battle right now. Mm -hmm. uh, you're struggling with different things in life, and it's all different with each of you. Uh, but the, the visualization that Matt and I had is that many of our friends are, are soldiers that are laying on the battlefield with yeah. arrows and spears sticking out of them because of what the, the world has done to them. And they don't even know that they're bleeding out. Yeah. Uh, learning the skills of how to get into God's Word is the sutures, it's the salve, it's the band-aids, it's how to help each other uh, remove the arrows, heal the wounds, and get back in the battle. Yeah because we're all in a battle. Yeah. Uh, so, hey, thanks so much for joining us today. And we're eventually going to be getting into how to use the church to make disciples. So yes. until next time, look forward to it. Take care.